Tired of wiping on the same boss for hours? Die, insect! Can't seem to win against that new druid deck? My thanks to you. Are your teammates not standing on the payload? Quit lollygagging. Get on the payload. Well, grab a drink and pull up a chair. This is the Game Case Show, your Blizzard Entertainment podcast. Here are your hosts, Cuddles and Turarts. Well, hello, hi, howdy, and welcome to me opening a show without the show notes in front of me and totally not remembering my intro. After 104 episodes, I am lost. Hi, I'm Cuddles. <laughs> I'm a brewmaster monk on Airy Peak to convert to Raid Guild. And I'm Terarch, the Beast Mastery Hunter, also in the Convert to Raid Guild on the Airy Peak server. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about our week in gaming. We're going to answer some questions from the Cuddle Crew. And then we're going to be talking to a wonderful, wonderful broadcaster. One, somebody in the, uh, in the space and sci-fi sphere that I've really looked up to for a long time. He has the absolutely best googly eyes. On all of Twitch. Malik. Malik, how are you doing tonight, Bay? I'm doing excellent, man. As yeah, just whew, yeah, just today's just been crazy trying to get myself set up to make sure I could come do this. <laughs> so Well, we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy week to hang out with us. Um, you know, how was the past week of life for you? Uh busy. I mean, to be honest, a lot of uh for me, a lot of stuff in Elite Dangerous. Uh, we've been doing uh, like Factorio and stuff with Chaos Dispenser, and we finally got DJ to play that game too. Uh, but yeah, a whole bunch of just different stuff during the week, yeah. Right on. Well, T, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? Um, as far as games go, um, Call of Duty World War II Zombies. I don't care about the story mode. I know I've heard they're good but I just want to kill the zombies. So I have been doing that a little bit on the, on the Xbox one. Um, the CTR five year anniversary guys is in two months and eight days. So you will see me in world of Warcraft, a ton because I have to collect prizes for tons of things. Um, and then I busted out the joystick for elite dangerous. Cause I'm trying to figure that out over the, 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 what is this thing called? Keyboard. I'm tired. I woke up at 4.30 my time over the keyboard, um, and I can't get out of the station. I can't dock, and I can't land, and I killed my ship five times and paid for it five times before I was like, you know what? We're just going to alt F4 and breathe, and we will come back to this. And I was this close to streaming this, and I was like, you might want to figure out the joystick a little bit. Unlike the first time you played this game when you just decided to stream without having any clue what was going on, and I am really glad I did. So it'll be a little bit before you see me streaming with the joystick it is not pretty not pretty some i think of my, my key bindings are wrong some know. of my absolutely best elite dangerous clips ever and my highest viewed youtube videos <laughs> come from me when i was first learning to use a hotas and banging around <laughs> the inside of space stations Just i'm horribly i don't know what it begins with a b it's a station that's on a planet i don't know so you should be able just to go straight up but I can't figure it out. Like, I, I think I need to sit down with the key bindings again. Sit down with someone with the key bindings. Because I followed that guide to freaking T, I swear. And be like, what is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong? But that'll be later. That'll be later. But I did do the Elite a little bit. Um, Still love the game. Just this this is, this Thrustmaster is deceivingly not, not as easy as it sounds it'll be. <laughs> yeah, see, I have a feeling like if I ever changed to a different joystick, I'd just bounce off of yeah. everything. 
because I I'm used to this. I'm used to this. I tried. I borrowed my uh, roommate's control stick to try a dual stick setup one time, and that was pretty much what happened. Is I'm bouncing around, it, just ding mm. ding ding ding. It's like pinball. It, it's mm, yeah. I could go on a really big rant right now, but I'm not going to because everyone has been there, <laughs> and we will we'll post show that if we're still if we're yeah. still on this. But cuddles, you've it's been three weeks since we've done this show. What have you been up to in gaming? So. Since the last show, um, I haven't played a whole lot of games, at least in front of my computer. Most of the games I've gotten to play have been on convention floors. <laughs> um, I've been at TwitchCon in Anaheim, or no, in Long Beach. Um, I was at VerseCon, which is a Star Citizen convention in Austin, Texas, and then was at BlizzCon in Anaheim. So I definitely, being in Florida, I definitely got some uh, frequent flyer miles. Um, <laughs> thank you, Delta, you. for for being wonderful and upgrading me to gold medallion. You guys are awesome. I'll always fly the friendly skies. If you want to sponsor the show or something, I don't. They probably weren't so. the friendly skies. I think that was United. <laughs> Damn it! It's okay, Delta. We can work on the slogan. Um, Once or lost. Yeah, it's it's it, it's that quick. It really and truly is. Um, no, but we'll we'll talk all about the um, all about the BlizzCon um, on the next show because we're gonna have a uh, a couple of very special guests. Um, I, I every year I jokingly um, book these two individuals and go, well, I got to book the uh, costume contest winner this year for next year, and um, yeah, they're uh, we we get to have the actual BlizzCon twenty seventeen. Costume contest winner um, in Laura Mercer, aka uh, Kaz Kazul G Fox and uh, Frosty Fox, her husband. So excited about that. Um, gaming was the question, and then I rambled. Um, gaming, I've played a game. Um, I played a little bit of PUBG this weekend, um, and uh, did some Hearthstone. I'm I'm totally excited, and this happens to me every year coming out of BlizzCon. I'm, I want to I want to start playing like WoW again. I want to start playing Hearthstone. Um, not so much on Hot. Sorry, um, MOBA suck. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a thing. Um, but no. Um, like it, it, I'm just I'm really excited for everything coming out of BlizzCon. But like I said, we're gonna talk BlizzCon next show because I'm starting to do it now. Um. Oh, we have no questions for the show. But and there's if, a reason. If we did if we did have questions on the show, you can go to bit.ly slash cuddles discord. It's bit.ly slash cuddles discord. Go to the questions for the show channel that we uh cleverly disguise as the questions for the show channel. Um yeah, put your questions in there. That's where they go. And we'll read them on the show. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in because I'm really excited. I, I I was not kidding at the uh, at the top of the show when I said that um, that that this is really a gentleman that I've I've looked up to and admired as streaming for some time. So we're gonna dive into the meat and potatoes. But before we really get into anything deep, Malik, tell us a little bit about you. Who who is the man behind the man behind the googly uh, eyes? <laughs> Um, well, myself, I'm a uh, prior U.S. Air Force, uh, served for about 10 years. Uh, I got out in 2013 and started doing uh, helicopter flight training uh, shortly after. Um, currently, yeah, the it's a kind of a thing going on with the school between the VA fun, funding it and everything like that. So I'm kind of like in this kind of limbo zone waiting. Uh, but in the meantime, I have picked up streaming and have been doing that since so uh got partnered like a couple months ago and um yeah just been just doing the the vr stuff mainly but yeah throwing a couple other games every now and then um sometimes people go can you play this game in vr and it's like not this specific one but i <laughs> try to do as many as i can but yeah Ryan, well, let's talk. Um, I know I think I approached you shortly after you got partnered saying, hey, we want you on. Um, because your road to partner is something that's quite interesting in my mind. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what you specialize in is um, 
this virtual reality. So how did you get into that? Did you start streaming with that or was it? Oh, this was something that I was still in the military with. And um, it, I had I had been looking at some random website about, a, at the time, a newer website called Kickstarter. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were doing some stuff on there. And the, the big thing that they were pushing was like, oh, this company, they're trying to push this new VR headset. And I'm like, oh, and I get in there and I'm like, oh, this looks cool sign me up. So it was the very first thing that I ever did on Kickstarter. And I ended up being like the 300th person out of like 6,000 people to kickstart the Oculus Kickstarter. And yeah, that was like, that's where it all started. And then, uh, yeah, came, uh, like I didn't like, that was like right at the end of my, uh, time in the air force. And I literally, I was like, oh, I'm just going to have the thing shipped to my grandparents' house when I get out, you know, and sit there. And I mean, that's pretty, I, I was at the time, I was actually stationed in Japan. So all my stuff was in a shed yeah. at my grandparents' house pretty much. Um, but yeah, I come back and he's like, yeah, here's your box, you know, whatever, <laughs> hooked it up to my computer. And it's like, oh, and it was just like one of those things. It's like, you try it. And this is the old DK1 square looking thing. And it, it's just one of those deals. You You try it and you just like oh, I can see what this can lead to kind of thing. And ever since then, I've just been just really into it since then. Now, when you started streaming, did you start it in VR or was that a gradual transition? Um, I originally started my, my it was under the stream name Malik underscore T, uh, which is just, I, I've used the, the name Malik for like all of my online whatever. Uh, and then I'm trying, I want to say it was one of the, the Star Wars, uh, the Old Republic that they included last names. So I started using a last name on it. And then when I tried to get onto Twitch, Malik was already taken. So I just did Malik T. And then from then, when I started actually doing the VR stuff and they allowed the name change thing, that's when I, in about February this year, is when I changed it to Malik VR. Because, I mean, that was pretty much what I was focusing on. But yeah, I mean, like initially, it, there might have been a couple non VR games, but then yeah, it was just the mainly VR game after VR game after VR game, and now it's the other way around. It's all VR <laughs> games, but every now and then they'll be sprinkled in a couple non VR things, and of course, at, it's always people come in and they're like, "This isn't VR. What is this? I don't understand. Where's the googly eyes?" You know, so yeah. Now we keep on referencing the googly eyes, and for those yes, that maybe yeah. haven't seen. Um, haven't seen your stream, and and for those that are listening in our ears, so Malik has a um. You're playing with an Oculus, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Malik has an Oculus, which has that flat black front. Well, he put two googly eyes on it because who's gonna want to just stare at like the front of a device for like hours and hours? Right. No, I say that. But is there a story behind the Google? Like, were yeah. you just like, oh, googly eyes? Or how did that come about? <laughs> well, uh, a, a good friend of mine that has known me way before I even started streaming, they one day they're like, you need to get some googly eyes for that thing because it, it's, it, it's kind of, they said, oh, it will look kind of funny. And I had been like kind of bouncing back and forth going, mm, yeah, maybe <laughs> so, you know, I might look like a fool, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but at the time, uh, I, there were no tools to for me to to interact with chat in VR like I have now, but at the time I literally had a program that every time someone said something, it would go ding, and I'd have to take the headset off and read what they say, and then put it back on and continue playing. And it was just yeah, like at the time, like I would sit there and be playing the game, and I'm going, 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 everything's totally quiet, and I go to take a drink and I take the thing off and I look at the thing and I notice, oh, about 20 people have come into the chat and then <laughs> left without saying a single thing. And I had little alerts everywhere on my stream saying, say something, he will respond and all this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, everyone just came in and in my head, they probably go, came in and they're like, what the hell does this guy have on his face? And then they leave, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I put the googly eyes on it and shortly after... Like, I kid you not, I put the googly eyes on it, I started my stream up, somebody came in and immediately goes, what the hell is that on your face? And I, ding, lift it up, 
I'm like, oh, and then then it started getting a little bit of back and forth, and it's just kind of like snowballed from there. I mean, it's it was it was just enough for people to stop and take a second glance, and then realize that you know if you say something, I can kind of respond to things. So, but I mean, we've gotten better and better tools since then, but that was that was pretty much the reason why I initially put them on there. So you're so backtracking a little bit back in the day, whenever in the day was, you used to have to take it off to read chat. And you said, now right. there's technology. Does it like pop up on your screen or how does that work? Um, kind of, sort of. Um, the initial thing that I had, I had a program called Chatty that it's just pretty much an IRC style chat client. And it has an option where if someone says something or something happens, it'll just play a sound effect. And that was, that was, that was pretty much all I had at the beginning. Um, later on, uh, when I actually started streaming a lot more, for, you know, well, yeah, just in generally a lot more. Um, that's when Marvin Darkstone came to me with a program that he was writing called Chatterbot. Um, that program, it pretty much would watch your stream and literally with a text-to-speech reader, read it out to you. So, so I went from having to ding, read it myself, to having it being read out to me um, and now I'm currently I'm using a program called V, which takes it's it's pretty much just an internet browser box, and it just injects it into the VR environment now. So, for example, when I'm playing Elite, I'm playing. I've got my spaceship in front of me, and I've got just a window that sits right about here that I can just kind of like glance up and read my text chat. Uh, and I pretty much I transitioned to it because it just it got to the point in my stream where then my stream was so active that. I was literally going and just waiting because there was so many people talking that the <laughs> bot would not shut up and I could not get a word in. So, and the thing is too, is that every time someone would say something new, the bot didn't care. It just interrupted me and just kept talking. So I had to like, <laughs> it was like, uh, it, uh, it, uh, you know, trying to just get a word in. And that's why, yeah, that's why I'm now transitioned to that. Um, and then, here's another thing, um, about a month ago, Oculus just had their Oculus Connect 4, their, for, their fourth year doing their big convention. They just announced a new thing called Oculus Dash that is coming out in December of this year, Ooh. which it, like, I won't technically have to use V anymore, but what they're doing now is I can take any window that is on my computer and pin it anywhere in the 3D virtual environment. So I can take... But my, put my internet browser over here and my chat in a different thing here and I could put Discord over here and I could put anything wherever I want to. But that's, yeah, that's supposed to be coming out later this year. So I'm looking forward to that as well. That sounds like it's going to be pretty helpful. Very much, yes. Now, got out of the military in 2013. Air, Air Force. When did you, I always lump it together. I'm a military girl, so I always say military. Sorry. Um, when did you start streaming then? Um, ooh, I think I made the account. Oh, God, I can't even remember when I made the account now. Um, I think I made the Twitch account in 2014, I think. But I didn't really start the streaming heavily until about 2015. Maybe around March, April, May of 2015 was when I really started picking up really big and getting into it a lot. I mean, it used to be like, oh, like, I mean, I kid you not, like, the first time I actually did the, my, my stream, like, I closed it down, and I immediately went, looked at the Elite Dangerous um, thing of showing everybody else was <laughs> doing Elite Dangerous, and I'm going through there, and, you know, I click on, click on the different people, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this guy's really loud. He just and I came across, and I came across this one guy, and that was how I met DJ Trusayer. <laughs> and yeah, it, I mean, it was kind of like the first day I ever streaming, and then that was the first day that I uh, met DJ Trusayer. But yeah, my first day streaming big time was probably one of the most boring streams if I look back at it now, because I was exploring <laughs> in an Asp Explorer. I was on my way to Sagittarius A Star in the game. So the big, long, long trip. And it's like, um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if anyone from my stream now went and back and watched that, they'd be like, what the hell is this? Because this is boring <laughs> shit, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, that was, it was just one of those things. Like, I was bored because it was just jump honk, jump honk, jump honk, scan and all that kind of stuff. And that's how I came across Graham and immediately jumped on his team speak. And I've been there pretty much ever since, so... <laughs> We do have an interesting question in chat. Um, they're very fascinated with how this VR works. So when you're saying like you have your chat up here, <coughs> pardon me, is it interfering with your interface or is it something like you look up, it's, how does it work? The the V window, it, it only works with a select few games. Um, it It's all down to like, I think some of the games that use, um, like if it's DirectX, I think right now is it works really well. Um, a couple games like like Dirt Rally, it only renders in the right eye only, which can be a little bit distracting. Um, but yeah, right now it's it's just a square rectangle that it's it's a it's a web browser. So if you can get if you can get it online, you can get it on that. So what I've pretty much done is the Twitch pop out chat URL. I enter that in there. I make sure it's in dark mode, so it's not this bright white square up ahead, <laughs> but it's a nice dark square where I can. It's not blinding me. But yeah, it. Um, I mean, I use the the kind of touch controller kind of thing, and you can literally grab it and position it and move it wherever you want to, and twist it and grab it and resize and all this kind of stuff. So it, it feels like you're just grabbing like this little square and you're moving it wherever you want, and then you can resize it wherever you want and all that kind of stuff so it's yeah i just kind of like move it up and out of the way and the reason why i put it up there is because then i like with me looking forward out of like the corner of my vision i can see like at least like the last five lines of text and if i need to like read back i just kind of tilt my head up and look but i found out a trick <laughs> in elite anyway where if i if i start elite first and then start V so that it hooks in and then it displays on screen, move it wherever I need to, and then I resize Elite to go full screen. It vanishes for people on stream, but I can still see it in VR. So oh, it's, nice. it's, it's there. I can see it. and But when I look up, it's not blocking the view for everybody. And sometimes I've gotten questions where someone will be like, I'll, I'll like lean to the side to look around it or something. And they, why, why do you keep leaning to the side? It's like, oh, because I have a window here that you guys can't see. I can't see shit behind it, but you guys <laughs> can, you know? So it, yeah, it's one of those, yeah, it's just, I, I'm having to, because the game, the VR stuff, it does have positional tracking. So if you like, people who have driven cars and stuff, when you're driving and you have like the A pillar of the car, you know, you kind of lean to the side and you can like look around that. You can kind of do the same thing in VR. It has that kind of, positional tracking i mean i've even gotten up and walked around my area and people are like oh you can walk around the ships now well yeah technically yes but you know <laughs> the game doesn't fully support that non-vr kind of stuff but yeah that is awesome um okay so started streaming what was your road to partner like because it's a very interesting story the bits i know mm, uh see that's it's it's the road to partner, that's the thing that I still don't understand how it happened. <laughs> um, it's one of these things like again, because I've been I've been streaming with with DJ and and Dan um, or the commander now he's he done the whole name change <laughs> thing, which I'm still getting confused and oh yeah, um, formerly Commander Hugh Man, he's now the commander. Um, th those two have helped me so much with learning how to do the streaming stuff like that um but yeah like initially getting into it i don't know like dj's thing was the whole lore of elite and my thing was i mean hell earlier this year february like i had my processor on my computer burned out so i had no gaming stuff at all and i sit there i'm like well I, I have to stream. I have to do something. So I drug my laptop out into the garage and I did a full engine swap on my car. So I, I'm like my stream. We do like a lot of science and technical stuff in elite, 
but also when my stuff breaks, I end up taking everything apart and putting it back together. So I really do get into the whole technical bit of stuff. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people come in for. Um, I also try, like in Elite anyway, um, the science bits, there's like... There's some things that some people, they get on the forums and they see all these threads about this was found and this is found, and this is found. And they look at it and they go, that's cool, but how can I help kind of thing? So what I've tried to do is on my stream, go through those threads, figure out how the people did it. And again, this is, this is going back to me in the military during at one point in the military, like. I, I got up to technical sergeant in the Air Force, and you train the people, you know, the the younger airmen in the Air Force, right? So one of the things I got somewhat decent at is taking a subject and then, you know, communicating with other people, finding out what their knowledge level is, and kind of being able to simplify it to the point where I could teach someone, no matter what their skill level is, how to do a certain thing. And that's kind of what I do in Elite now is I sit there and I take these things that people decode alien transmissions and somehow turn an audio file into an image and, uh, oh, this, oh this, this sound makes Morse code. And if you do this, it draws out your ship. And it's just like, how did you figure that out? Figure out how they figured it out and then teach other people how to do it. Um, yeah, we had – there was um, – when the – when the event happened and they started fi finding the Thargoid ground yeah. base around Merope, um, it initially we had in team speak, we had like a room where we had a whole bunch of people that that's what they were doing. They were decoding all the signals. And I remember cause there were four people in that room cause those four people knew how that they, they were the only ones that knew how to do it. Well, I sat there and I grabbed one of them. I was like, teach me how to do this. Okay. Um, teach me how to do this. I can't, so they came in, they, I had them on the stream, they taught me, and then I turned around and I showed everyone else what to look for, the high, low signals, how to decode it, all this kind of stuff. Suddenly that room that had four people in it now had 15 people in it. Ah. And we were just steamrolling and just finding these sites so quick. It was, it was crazy. We just had like a, force multiplication kind of thing with that so yeah it was i mean hell even even today um pretty much i pulled out my whiteboard and we went over this is everything we know up to this point and we went over the probe signals and the the sensor signals and the 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 sounds you get from the link and all this kind of stuff so that's that's what today's stream was but it's still trying to get people that don't know how to do this, how to get them involved in it and, and helping out and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. Now, do you like, as I hear that you have experience teaching and like, it's, it's obvious now that you've said that or training. Um, right. Right. It's, do you think that that specifically has been like a huge boon to you? Because we see other guys like, um, just off the top of my head in space and sci-fi, we got DJ Knight um, was an educator, Astropub. Um, like, it, it seems like it's a it's a boon to be able to break this stuff down. Kind of. I, it might be. Um, I mean, it, it definitely helps. Like, I mean, when, whenever anyone plays a game, a lot of times you have people that will come into the stream and say, hi, I'm new. Can you help me with this? And, and that, that's, it's one of those things like, um, if, it, and it is kind of like kind of a little running joke with my stream too. But, um, when someone comes in and they, they ask, Oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? My response is I'm greedy because I want to teach more people because that way I have more people to play with. <laughs> you know, because if you have a game that has this kind of slight, st steep learning cliff to get over, oh, you know, <laughs> if you can get them past that initial cliff, okay, and they're, they're boom, now they're on and playing the game. It's that initial cliff. If they can't, if they get stuck on that and they go, 
screw this and they leave and never come back, well, that's that's a player that that I don't get to play with anymore. And it's 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 I look back at it now and it's like, okay, cool. I remember getting onto the game and my very first interaction with the player, someone like someone dropped in on me and like they came up close to me and they just started shooting at me. <laughs> right. And at the time I was in a sidewinder and now that I look back, they were in a Cobra. So it was just like sidewinder versus Cobra. Not going to, not going to end well. And I look back now and it's like, you know, there was, there was no communication going on. There was, there was nothing, no, no camaraderie or anything like that. It was just, they came in, they started shooting. That was, that was it. And I'm like, you know, I mean that, that was way before I started streaming and that I kid you not, that was like one of those things that for me, I was like, this sucks. You know, I didn't, I don't want to play this anymore. And if I had stopped then, you know, I wouldn't be here now, but now it's, it's funny. I log on and I've actually had to put a bug report into frontier for this. But, um, if you're scrolling through your text menu, every time a player comes online or goes offline, it resets to the bottom. And my friends list is like 300 people now. So oh, mine wow. constantly is going on and offline. So I can't scroll through stuff and it gets really irritating. <laughs> so, so I've actually had to put a bug report in for that. But yeah, it's, um, I mean, it, it's nice to sit there and open up the galaxy map and I've got little green dots scattered all around the galaxy now. So yeah, it, it's, it's really neat to just see all the people that are playing and stuff. Making mental notes to hit yep. up Malik for help with Otis. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so much more helpful than me. Yeah. <laughs> but do you think like I, I mean I'm 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 like seven hundred hours into Elite, which I know is infinitesimal, I'm sure, compared to the I would guess a couple thousand you have racked up. Um but do you think that that that's that learning cliff that kind of struggle of the new player, do you think that that's something that that endears us to the game even more, like even before we really dive in? Or do kind you think of, I mean, Frontier's it, just bad at tutorials? No, the <laughs> tutorial thing has actually gotten a lot better. I well, mean, it was, it, it, was, it was one of those things, like, I remember when they were like, oh, the tutorials are now fully voice acted on this stuff. And I sat there and I made it a point on stream to go back to the tutorial and run the entire tutorial again just to show people how much it has changed. And it was like, I remember getting back on the tutorial and it was doing something and it was discussing stuff. And I realized it's like, wow, like I wish I had known that when I first started playing because now the tutorial actually makes it a point to, exp like you have your radar and then you have your little compass that's next to it. And it's the whole, you know, if it's a solid dot, it's somewhere in front of you. If it's a hollow dot, it's somewhere behind you. I didn't learn that until like two months into the game. I was going to say, I was several now, hundred hours yeah, into the game. Now it's, it's, they explain what it is. And it's like, well, crap, I wish they had done that when I was, you know, new to the game kind of thing. So, yeah, it, it's, they, they've definitely, definitely uh, changed a bunch of stuff. And then it's, it's like funny little things. Like when the tutorial came out, one of the voice acted bits was the character like the character that was coming to repair your ship they're like yeah i'm sending over a repair limpet i'm not supposed to have these right now but don't tell anybody and that was back in 2.2 .2. yep. we only got repair limpets in 2.4 which is only you know a couple months old now so it was it, i thought that was like a fun little thing that they added in showing like yeah oh yeah we're working on repair limpets it's not in yet but they're coming kind of thing so they they and it's one of the some little things you go back and you you look at stuff Frontier have released in the past and it's like, oh crap, they were hinting at stuff then. And it yeah, it's it's another one of those big things on my stream that we sit there like we go back and we revisit stuff that they've tried to do in the past, and then we realize, you know, hindsight, it's like, oh crap, we like we were being told to do this thing about a year ago and we totally <laughs> ignored it. So we need to kind of pay attention to what they're telling us to go do now. And yeah, we, we try to do that too. And I try to, whenever like the big gal net news stories come up, I try to like, try to point things out to people and yeah, 
just that kind of stuff. But yeah, a lot of, some people still don't listen, so still keep trying. Now, with Elite Dangerous, you are a part of a community. I always want to call it a guild, but it's not a guild, a part of community called the Sovereignty. Tell us a little bit about the Sovereignty. Well, the Sovereignty itself, we first, I mean, literally, it was started because of uh, Graham was lazy. Um, <laughs> literally, I love it. he was things. streaming. He was streaming. He never watched chat. So, what he did is he started, he had the little team speak server client on his computer and he pretty much said i'm not watching chat come into team speak so we can talk you know that was it and that was the deal is i joined the team speak haven't left since but that was where it started um at the time it was called the imperial inquisition we were you know fanatical imperialists that was that was kind of like our role play thing in the game um and again this is Disclaimer, we don't actually believe the stuff that our commanders in the game. We just follow it for the role play story thing. So if something happens, we say, oh, our commanders will react like this kind of thing. Um, and uh, we have had people uh, come after us both stream side real life and in game because they don't understand that it's that's the role play portion. <laughs> and it's like, dude. Do you not understand the difference between, you know, this is us in the game. We don't believe that in real life kind of thing. So it's just we, you know, it's 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 sometimes a little bit frustrating that way. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, it's it's kind of like when when an event in the game happens, we can then go, oh, our our commanders, because we're fanatical imperialists will react and do this or if it's something that the federation wants to do then we're totally against it you know all that kind of stuff um but it's it's all down to the role play kind of stuff we don't we like one of our big things is of course the whole tradition of the empire is the whole a woman is not allowed on the throne okay that's again for role play <laughs> We don't believe that, and people freak out about that. And it's like, no, we don't. You know, it's it's, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Like we we've gotten like I've gotten some nasty messages on the the forums and through through Twitch and stuff like that. People are like freaked out about, it. and it's like, no, no, God. stop, please, holy crap. So I mean, I don't know. It's it's, it's it can be sometimes odd, sometimes, but. I don't know. Some people just don't. It doesn't get through. Even even though if I go and I explain it like multiple times, for some people it just still doesn't get through, and they still just get angry. And it's just like, dude, calm down, please. Holy crap! But yeah, it's. I mean, that's that's where it was. Uh, again, our group it, it went on, and we actually we were the Imperial Inquisition until we got to a point where Frontier themselves put our player group into a war with the Federation out in the Pleiades. Oh. And during that time, the other Empire player groups sided with the Federation. And it was at that point we're like, well, okay, well, we're leaving the Empire then. We're being independent, and we change our name to the Sovereignty. We now follow the uh, Harold Duval, which is the 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 out out well, it's bloodline the next son of the the previous empire em emperor and everything like that. But um, yeah, that's where our group is now, and that's that's why again for role play reasons, that's where why we are with that name, where we are in the in the politics of the galaxy and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. It's it's been a kind of like a really long road to get here, and I mean it, it's one of those things like you go the system that 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 uh, community goal was in. There's now two tourist beacons there, kind of explaining what had happened at that point and everything. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, most people don't know about it because it's only about ninety thousand light seconds from the main star, so it's a little bit of a trip to actually head out and go look at them. So I think that's why a lot of people don't 
Yeah. Most people, what? they get into the system and it's like, oh, 5,000 light seconds, I'm going somewhere else. This one's 90,000. So it's like a it's like a 10 to 15 minute trip just to get out there. See, I always like one of the things I had done on my stream was we took a uh, we took like a nine month journey out into the black and just wandered around. So that boring jump honk, jump honk, jump honk. Like that's all right, we did. Right. Uh, somehow it worked. But I always like. I, I could remember, like, any time I would jump in and see something that was, like, 8... Like, 8,000 was my mental cutoff, but I don't know how many things that I, I flew out to that were 95,000, 120,000. Because I was right. like, all right, we're going to set the throttle. I'm going to go make a snack. I'll be back in a few minutes, and then we're going to chat. Like, right. I mean, how's life? I, I had a little personal uh, mission uh, about a month ago where we were trying to gather one of every single rare item in the game. Oh, wow. And so the very first one we went out to was Hutton Orbital, which, you know, <laughs> 2. 0. 0.22 light years, you know, only an hour and 20 minutes or so of flight. But, um, yeah, we sat there and that was it. We were just flying straight. And it was just for that, it was just talking back and forth on uh, on the stream and everything like that. But even though it was an hour and a half of just straight line flight, still had people coming in and talking about things. And I mean, that was the very first one. And then it went and we gathered like 200 different items. It was, yeah, it was crazy oh. trying to, because pretty much what, what our general test, again, it was all, it was all in the name of science in the game. <laughs> we were gathering one of everything and then going down to the Pleiades and, Offering them to the Thargoids to see if they would. Are you guys going to react differently to any of these things? You know, here, try this stuff. And they no, it still don't do anything. But um, yeah, I've actually got a, a second uh, account now that is literally sitting with a Type Seven. That the Type Seven's ship name is now called Bag of Holding, and it just holds everything. So it's sitting in a in a station holding all the rare items now. Oh, I love it. Now, the sovereignty we've talked about, it's grown quite a bit. This weekend, you guys had, I think, is, is an amazing feat happen. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, we we started the sovereignty stream team. It technically went live on Saturday. Um, we did a 24-hour rolling host where we just had people, you know, one person after another, and we just rolled the host from from, from person to person to person. Uh during all of Saturday. So that, that worked really, really well. It was, it was awesome. And what would you say is the, I want to say mission statement, but kind of goal of the sovereignty stream? The, it, it's kind of like mainly a lot of people that are focused on elite and the group itself. But uh, I mean, it's mainly just people that are in the group. I mean, there, we have a pretty much an application kind of thing. And it's one of those deals. If you're in, if you're, on in the sovereignty and you're active on team speak a lot of times you know apply to the stream team kind of thing see i've been in the team speak i don't talk though but that is just my personality i just sit there and lurk everybody um all right so we've talked about sovereignty your road to partner the vr a little bit let's talk about because cuddles doesn't he doesn't get to geek out with me about conventions very often you however you were at twitchcon yes mm -hmm. let's have you two talk about twitchcon a little bit what was it like? Did you have fun? What'd you see? What'd you do? Go. Well, Malik, it was your first TwitchCon, right? Yes. All right. Well, what did what did you think? Well, to be honest, I I have been to let's see three conventions in my entire life. <laughs> TwitchCon being the, the the newest one, but the only other two that I've ever been to in my life was Fantasticon in okay. Hull, England. And the only one before that was a construction convention that I went to when I was in high school. Okay. So going from drills and saws to that kind of convention, it's pretty much, it was, it was a, like, um, it was a stadium that these people were pretty much pickup trucks everywhere and, uh, DeWalt and, and skill saw and everything that was, and God, that was like, ah. Uh, 15, 16 years ago or so. Uh, and then Fantasticon, which Fantasticon is its own thing because it's more of a social thing because it's a much smaller convention kind of deal. TwitchCon, oh my God. I've never been to anything like that before. It was just like you get in there and you're like, 
there's so many people here. Like, I, I don't like I'm not a big fan of a lot of people, to be honest. Uh, but it was one of those things like, OK, and just kind of wander around trying to just figure things out. I think like um, because this was my first one for me, most of the time was kind of figuring out. OK, what should I go see? What should I go do? Uh, and I think if anything for next year, I, I'll ha- I definitely have a better kind of handle on a plan of, of what to to go and do stuff. But, yeah, I've never I've never been to anything that big before. So it kind of kind of like a little bit overwhelming and just trying to adjust to it and get used to it and then figure out like like get there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And at the end of Sunday, it's like, OK, now I'm getting some. Oh, crap. We got to go home now. Crap. You know. And yeah, so it was that kind of feeling and it's like you know i i could have done this i could have done that but you know at the time it's just still kind of figuring everything out and that's what first conventions can be like really really over like my first con would have been blizzcon in 15 yes 15 um and i i remember feeling the exact same way like just wandering around, and then even after that, I did. I think I did another BlizzCon before I went to PAX, and my first PAX it was in uh, Boston, PAX East, and I did not do a thing. I just <laughs> wandered around like a country mouse in the big city, like <laughs> like eyes probably as big as saucers. Just like, where did all these people come from, and what am I supposed to do? Um, so it's I. I just, you 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 have the right idea. You kind of took it in. Next year you'll be. Uh, oh, definitely you'll, yes. You'll you'll take it by force. Um, but no one of the, one of the fun things we got to do even before the con, since we've been talking a lot about elite, um, I'd like to, and I'm sure Malik would join me in thanking, um, Ed and Bo for taking us out for a uh, a oh, nice yes. little dinner. Yeah, that was awesome. Like finally being able to meet them. I mean. It was, oh, for me, it was really, really kind of, I was like, you know, oh, what? When that, when, I, when I was talking to him, but like, I, I come up there and, you know, finally, you know, it's like lock eyes with Ed and Ed's like, ah, hey, come, come over here, you know? And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, go over there. Finally, I was able to like shake his hand and going up and talking with him. And he's like, oh yeah, during your, your last stream, you did this. And, th- and I'm like, you're watching my streams. And it's like, <laughs> okay. And then like. Yeah, and just talking with Ed and Bo and everything like that. And, like, for most, like, for about an hour and a half on Saturday, it was just me, Ed, and Bo kind of wandering around looking at things and stuff like that, which was, it was, it was one of those things. It's like, it's unreal. And it's just like, this is really weird, you know? But it was, it was, it was fun. It was real fun. Like, being able to talk with them and just, just, I mean, not necessarily even having to talk about Elite, just random stuff. It was just being able to, talk to them as as people it was just it's you see them on their on their streams doing their thing but it's it's totally different when you're just able to talk one-on-one on them with them and everything like so yeah and for those for those that may not know because i don't think either one of us actually said it we're talking in like elite uber code here yeah um ed and Bo are um ed lewis and Bo merit <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Bo Merritt, the um, the um, community managers for Elite and Planet Coaster. Um, although I think are they officially like separate in that now? Um, like is Ed Elite and she's because I feel like they used to do a lot more like together. Kind of, sort of. They they yeah. kind of they kind of both kind of sneak in on each other's streams though. Yeah, at, at times. So they're kind of um, yeah. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. They I mean I've like. The last Ed live stream was pretty much having Bo play the game, and then Bo's live stream had Ed playing Planet Ghost. So it's, I don't know. It's yeah, they're kind of just both. It's yeah. so like, where do you work? Yeah, I'm so what confused. Do do? Um, but it's really cool to see a community team that works together like that, even like across game, like just just to see a, such an obviously happy work environment in. To be to be part of not only the elite community, but then having the elite community managers get what they do so darn well. Um, I I think in the entirety of my experience, the only people that live up um, 
live up to them and and um tyler you haven't bought me you haven't bought me dinner yet so just like a slight long rung below is the uh star citizen um they have this like the same kind of like just i don't know like they feel like our friends and they are but you know there's that like community manager that like likes your tweet or retweets <laughs> something and then there's that community manager that will wander around twitchcon for an hour and a half um that's 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 really awesome. Well, what what else about TwitchCon? Like, what, what was the absolute highlight of your trip? Oh shoot! I mean, it was mainly just like there's so many people that, you know, we 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 talk to each other on Teamspeak or we see each other on streams and stuff like that. To finally be able to like meet up with people and be like, you know, shake their hand or give them a hug or something like that. It's it's so it's. And I had this same kind of thing when we went to when I went to Fantasticon, but um, it's like you, you start the convention, you start meeting these people that you've only talked to online, you hang out with them. It's like okay, cool. You go back to your hotel. You're like okay, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Cool. Go back, see them tomorrow. And at the last day, you're like you're sitting there going, and you're like oh oh oh, and now I'm sad because now I don't get to see anybody anymore. <laughs> And then you have to go home and it's like, it, it, it's awesome to see everybody. But at the same time, it's kind of like, ah, crap, I got to go home. Talk to you on TeamSpeak later. Cool. Later. You know, and then, and then you just get right back home, log back onto the computer, turn on TeamSpeak. You're good to go. And there's everybody again. So it's, it's kind of un unreal in that way. So, but yeah, just being able to like put, you know. Faces to names. Some people, some people don't, you know, they don't do the live stream with the camera. So, so for some people, that's like the first time you see them, you know. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's that's the kind of thing. It's this social thing is what I think is the coolest bit about it. Well, what about was there any other streamer? Because like I, 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 like you were one of the streamers for me this year. Like every year, I meet somebody that I'm just kind of like, oh, I met them. <laughs> oh. Um. And and you were definitely one for me this year. Um, I, I got to say a brief hello to Shroud, which that's like he's just an FPS god. Um, and then like getting to see like uh, like DJ and and the commander, yeah, his his principle of fancy pantsness. Um, yeah. like was there any was there anybody that you saw that you kind of fanboyed out over? Um, I mean, uh, Bad News Baron and DJ Knight finally being able to meet those two. Um, and it, oh, DJ Knight, it was a little bit odd because, like, every time we met, we were, like, passing each other. Like, we were, <laughs> we were never able to actually stop and talk. That was the bad part. Is, like, we passed each other, like, three or four times. And it's like, oh, hey, dude, you know, whatever. We'll talk to you later. And we never got to the, like, we never got to the point where we were in the same place for the same amount of time to actually talk about stuff. <laughs> so it was, just, it was just funny. We just kept meeting each other at random spots around the convention. It was, it was really, really odd. It was just, it was just so, so unreal. Oh, and crazy! You can't do that. Sorry, our bots kind of. GI <laughs> Joe. Just what you posted. It just. Oh. <laughs> it just deleted his post for saying GI. Yes. Like that. Oh gosh. Cuddle Cut bot is, is feisty. Go oh, home, you're drunk. Wow. Jesus. <sighs> to oh my lord! I, I don't even have words for that. Um. No, that's oh. really and Baron, <laughs> Baron and DJ are are incredible people. Like just absolutely incredible people, um, and like everybody in this community, like, what what the hell's going on? Like I've looked at other games, and I don't, like I don't know. Some of their streamers That's... are are curmudgeons. Like everybody in our community <laughs> seems to like everybody just gets together. Oh yeah, it's 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 I don't know. It's just it's for me anyway. One of the one of the main reasons why I'm all into space games in general that was just because growing up younger my dad always wanted to watch football he never let me watch star trek so i sat there i always had to go to my friend's house to watch star trek because he would never he, he he never had it on ever so because of that that was what my fascination was space and everything and it just kind of snowballed into where it is now but yeah it's all down to my dad being want, wanting to watch 
Monday Night Football or whatever the hell it was at the time. So yeah, whatever. But yeah, <laughs> it's 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 just the space thing in general. It's just there's you know there's just the wonder of space. You just have that general thing for everybody in the community, and that that just kind of brings everybody together. It's like, oh, check this out. You know this this cool thing has happened in space today, or look at this cool thing that we found in the game and all that kind of, it's, it's just this constant wonder of what's going on and now we're going oh it's cool but now we're going to be attacked by aliens and you know all this kind of stuff so yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> well anything else about streaming virtual reality I don't think did we miss anything Malik IRL anything I missed that you would like to your moment to shine um, I'm ooh, I'm not really too sure to be honest. I'm trying to think what else. I can't think of anything right now to be honest. Is there anything coming up with Malik? Just keep doing the same thing. Um, yeah, kind of the same thing. I'm still I'm I've been it's it's one of these things that I need to get off my ass and actually do it. But I've been wanting to do a series of videos, and again, it's the whole trying to help the community kind of thing. Um, it's been something that I've been, we've been joking, joking with for a couple months now, but uh, create a series called Malik Minutes. Um, just pretty much short to the point kind of help videos that I want to do. Um, like yeah, the big thing is like the the general rules for, for this is um, – Everyone, everyone has has seen and heard it, but those YouTube videos where you you click play and it goes, "Hey guys, welcome to my oh stream. My God. Like yes. subscribe down here." And it's like, okay, rule one: never ever do that. Nope. Yes. Two: it's going to jump in. If you're not ready, you're going to miss things because that's how quickly I'm, I plan on getting into it. But it's going to be, you know, it's going to start off basic, intermediate, advanced. You know, just. Can we like do one, a step below basic? Because I think that's what I need. Like, what's that step if, below if basic? Need be, if need be, yes. So we can sit there and do do below basic. Or, I need below basic. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the whole crawl before you walk. walk kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm down yeah. for this. You can definitely do that, yes. <laughs> but no, that but yeah, sounds that's, awesome. What are they going to be geared towards? Like, how-tos in Elite, like, I'm assuming? Yeah, pr primarily Elite. Um couple couple things that people like topics that keep being brought up um navigation on a planetary surface and more recently how to properly use a white door for neutron star without wrecking your ship um those seem to be the two big things right now um but there i've got a lot of suggestions on my discord i've got a discord channel that's simply dedicated to just suggestion stuff um I mean, I have I have done in the past again because my stream does when I'm not doing elite. I do a lot of technical stuff. Um, I did a stream about two months ago where we just did a mock. This is how you would set up OBS to stream, and we just went over all the different tools about what you know. I use Snaz to grab whatever music I'm playing to display the music track that's playing and uh, Ankbot to do all the commands and you know all the I have all these different things and but a lot of people like I had to kind of learn it the hard way like me uh, Dan and Graham we all kind of helped each other figure things out um, but yeah then we had people like Gessiap and Tom Parks come in and they're like oh we can do this on the bot and they just created all these crazy <laughs> and now it's like okay cool I've got 300 odd commands but let me look back at it at someone who's just beginning to do the thing they don't have moderators that do all this kind of stuff so let me try to do a little help thing on showing people how they can start off and then they can go from there kind of thing so i need all of this in my life like <laughs> it needs to be done but no that sounds amazing um i think the future of malik's gonna look pretty good all right, right anything on. else i don't think i missed anything i think i covered no, all my questions I, I think we got it and uh I think that's going to bring us to uh, to time for shout outs. Wonderful, magical time of the show. Malik, do you have anybody that you'd like to shout out? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout out uh, DJ Trusayer, Caleb Dark, The Commander, formerly known as Commander <laughs> Human. 
Um, that yeah, he's he's still doing the whole name change thing over all this stuff. So it's yeah, it's still a little bit confusing. Yeah, he actually sense. he actually ruined one of my voice attack commands because of that. I had I had a voice attack command like open Commander Human Twitch and it would open up on the screen. He's ruined that now. I had to completely redo it. Oh, yeah. Damn, Damn it, Dan. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, the sovereignty as a whole, the new stream team that we just had go live last Saturday. So. Uh, a lot of good streamers on there too. I love this guys because so I, we write show notes every week and very rarely do people actually mark in our show notes, but he did it and I was so proud of him. <laughs> I would have given him a sticker. Um, shout outs for me this week. Uh, so as a lot of you know, BlizzCon just happened. We're going to talk more about that next episode. We had this little live stream party thing that we did that was started off rough, but got better. Um, so huge shout out to the CTR party planning team. Um, I would list you all off, but I'm scared I'd forget somebody. So just shout out to everyone over the past eight months who planned that. We get three months of break, guys, and then I'm going to be right there reminding you that we got to do this all over again. Um, shout out to Celestalon, Automatic Jack, and Lore. They are three developers, various developers and community managers for Blizzard. They actually came on the live stream, which was huge um, for those of us that couldn't attend just to see those presences in the community there. Um, and then huge, huge shout out to Coltrane. Um, yeah, just huge shout out to Coltrane for being on the, the stream. And that was great to kind of play an homage to our past as we reached our, our fifth, our five, not our five year anniversary, our fifth Blizzard party. Because it's actually our fourth anniversary, but it's five, five. There's a big argument about this. If Pat Crane watches this, he will tell you. Okay. But don't, don't ask. Cuddles, cuddles, hon. It's been a couple of weeks. What shout outs do you have, dear? Um, wow. Uh, like all, all of the people, if I have met you or, or hugged you over the past three weeks, I shout out to all of you. Um, with a special shout out to, uh, to Malik, first and foremost, for coming on the show. Um, thank you for taking some time out. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, um, no problem, dude. After, after the great and wondrous Malik VR, um, DJ Knight, um, for I missed him at like three conventions. <laughs> I always ask him like if I can just get five minutes of his time because he's if you ever see DJ at a con like Malik said he's like he is all over the place. That man has a schedule from like eight a.m. to two a.m. Um, but he took he took probably like I don't know like half an hour, maybe even a little bit longer with me. Um, outside of the Hilton on Sunday night of BlizzCon. Maybe it was Saturday night. I don't know. Days are hard. Um, but th just thank you for uh, for that for that mentorship, that friendship. Um, to Coltrane. Oh my gosh, Colt. I love you. Like we we spent twenty minutes arguing with each other over who loved the other person more. Like that was our entire conversation. Um, Know, know that I really look up to you, Colt, and uh, it, it was really the highlight of my BlizzCon um, to uh, to get to meet you. Um, second, Well, to you that, hadn't met Colt yet. I had never Sorry. met Colt. Yeah. Um, oh. Celestalon, Automatic Jack lore. Like, holy hell. I went from being, like, this scared little, like, wallflower that nobody had, like, any, like, any idea who I was. And, and you, like especially Celestalon has been there like I don't know kind of shepherding me in the blizzard world um so thank you for that and then Lord just like plopping down at the table um an automatic jack like just to, like chat like Lore actually walked over and was like can I come on camera and I was like I didn't know I could ask you to um and it, it was just it was an absolutely wonderful um wonderful experience I'll gush more about shout outs again next week because I've been gone for three weeks and at three conventions. So I have all of the people. Um, oh, one last one. Cut a wife. She's been tagging along to cons with me now. And uh, we're having a really good time of it. So I'm, I'm glad to see her kind of uh, hanging out in the community and, uh, and doing things. Um, so this brings us to another wonderful, magical, and incredible part of the show. The part of the show where my co-host gets nervous because she has no idea what I'm going to say. But I get down on my virtual knees and I beg and I plead for those all important five star iTunes reviews. That's right, guys. Five stars for the Game Case Show 
if you liked this. If you didn't like this show, why don't you leave two stars for Thargoid Supremacy, a podcast all about how Thargoids are vastly superior to the entirety of the human race. Um, those guys are assholes, and they deserve two stars. Um, but Malik, where can people find you on the internet? They can find me at Malik underscore VR on Twitch, which if I even have my own stream open, hold on one second. I've got this somewhere. <laughs> hold on one moment. I got this maybe. Hold on. Right, right there. You can find me at that link right there. Which I will repost. Oh, you. no. <laughs> Cuddlebot <laughs> loves everybody. Yeah, even our yeah. co-hosts. <laughs> Get yelled at. Um, <sighs> go Cuddlebot. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. Cuddlebot is is special, guys. We'll be back for a really quick post show. Um, but thank you so much to everybody that hung out. Thank you to Malik. Thank you to T. Um, thank you to everybody that hung out in the chat room and everyone that's putting us in your ears at home. Um, that's gonna do it for today. So Malik T, say bye. 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 Thank you for listening to The Game Case Show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. You can find Cuddles at The Game Case, Tourarts at Tourarts, and you can find the show at The Game Case Show. Join us live Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash thegamecase. Archived episodes are available at youtube.com slash thegamecase. The theme music for the show is Celtic Impulse by Kevin McLeod of Incomputech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.